This Saturday, the Utah Utes take on the Weber State Wildcats. We're previewing the matchup and predicting which Utes will go off on today's Locked on Utes. You are Locked on Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Lockdown Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We'd love to interact with you guys in the comments as well as on social media. You can follow our show at Lockdown Utes. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah, University of Utah Athletic Department, and my Twitter handle is at JT Wister, so you guys can also hit me up there. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. Terms and conditions do apply. On today's show, we're going to preview Utah's matchup against Weber State, and in order to help me do that, it's Bryson Lester of the Big Sky Conference. He's the Director of Communications for the Big Sky, and Bryson, I think the biggest thing people like just kind of want to know from a Utah perspective is what what is this Weber State team? What's what are they about, and what kind of challenge will they present to Utah? Yeah, first off, thanks for having me, man. Glad to be here. Uh, this is a good Weber State team. This is a top mm-hmm. ten FCS team right now, uh, coming off a really big win next week or last week, excuse me, against Northern Iowa. Went out on the road to Northern Iowa, picked up a big win in the dome. So this is a Weber State team that is you know very veteran led. They got a lot of seniors, a lot of dudes that can make plays. Very good on the defensive side of the ball. So. Overall, this is a very, very good Weber State team that we fully expect to contend for a Big Sky title again. They've been doing it since 2016. Jay Hill did a fantastic job there. Mickey Mantle's taking the reins here in his first year. And this is a good Weber State squad that's going to be a very good team uh, in the FCS this season. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the last time I talked about this on my show a little bit yesterday, mm-hmm. the last time Utah and Weber State played, Weber State actually ended up leading that game for a lengthy amount of time. Now, mainly that was due to the rain delay, but there was a kickoff in that game. They led it seven to three and kind of the first, I believe there was eight minutes to go in the first quarter, kind of. So, hey, crazy. Anything can happen overall. Look, Utah should win this game, right? They're a top 15 team for the reason. They're better at the majority of the positions on the field. When you look at the talent in the trenches, court, even with backup quarterback, quarterback play overall, I would say to but if weaver state were to somehow pull off what would be a, a crazy upset like i said for utah to, you know play their game physical in the trenches run the ball um even just let nate johnson get some more opportunities but if weaver state were to somehow win this what would be their recipe for success yeah i mean you mentioned you know the last time they played there Rashid shaheed had that kickoff return mm-hmm. That, it kind of starts there. You have to have big plays in really opportune moments. Weber has a phenomenal kick returner, Abraham Williams. He has five touchdowns in the return game. He's two away from Rashid's FCS record. So it kind of starts there with Weber State as well. Um, you know, they have a very senior led veteran offensive line and a running back behind it and Damon Bankson, who's currently leading the Big Sky Conference in rushing yards. Uh, so, so they're going to look to keep it on the ground quite a bit, I would imagine. Um, so if they can get some success in the running game early, have, you know, in, in, in these money games, these buy games for these FCS teams, it always just comes down to limiting turnovers, right? You just, you can't make mistakes. I've, I've been part of a bunch of them in, you know, working here for the Big Sky Conference. I worked at Southern Utah University before that. You know, I've sat through a lot of these, these FCS, FBS matchups and a lot against Pac-12 opponents. And a lot of times it just comes down to limiting your turnovers. You know, you just got to, you got to clean it. You play, you have got to play a clean football game if you're the FCS team in this, in this uh, situation. And this Weber State team looks poised to do that. Yeah, they're definitely going to have a chance with how they take care of the ball overall because of how potent that rushing attack has been. It's just, like you said, it's a different animal when you're taking on a top 15, not just team, but especially with the way the Utah defense has been playing so far in the season, yep. limiting both the Baylor offense and the Florida offense in particular to just a lack of yardage points, whatever you want to classify it based on in general. And uh, let's start to preview it a little bit more by uh, giving some predictions for how I think some of the Utah players will do. And then you can kind of tell me how you think that aspect of Weber's defense is going to hold up. First, we'll start with the Utah offense. Nate Johnson is going to be getting the start, barring something crazy and Cam rising trots out. And even if we did see Cam, I would expect Utah to treat this as a preseason game for Cam, where maybe we'd see him for one to two possessions. But 
just in general, it's always so hard to read Kyle Whittingham is, I mean, you know, Bryson being around college coaches so much, they're always so truthful with everything and injuries and all the information that's out there in general. So I, I don't think Cam's going to play. I think it's going to be Nate. And this will be the first time we've seen Nate operate the offense for the entirety of a game. We saw him take over late in the fourth quarter, lead that 88 yard touchdown drive, made a number of plays and then ran in the final touchdown himself. But I'm really excited to see him operate from the pocket for an entire game. And obviously he's still going to use his legs because he's Nate Johnson. He's pretty athletic, but I think he's got a chance to this for this one to throw him between 200 to 250 yards. I mean, we're talking about a guy, four-star recruit, a lot of talent who did make some plays with his arm against the Baylor defense. So I do expect him to have some success against Weber State through the air. How do you think the Weber State secondary is going to hold up against Nate Johnson? You know, Weber State does have a pretty good secondary. They've got some cornerbacks that are uh, have been around the block, former All Big Sky players. Uh, Maxwell Anderson is one of them. Mark Johnson is the other. They've got a couple guys in the backfield that can make some plays. Um, it's just really good lockdown corners. Uh, I, I do anticipate, you know, Weber's defensive line is pretty young. Uh, they've looked pretty good in the first couple matchups. They looked really good against Northern Iowa and really created some space for some linebackers to get into the backfield and make some play. But, you know, in these in these type of matchups, you always see uh, in the trenches <laughs> is where football games are won, right? And when it comes to FBS to FCS size sometimes. So I would imagine Nate Johnson has some more time than he's been used to mm -hmm. in the pocket to make some throws. But Weber's corners are ready to step up to that challenge. Uh, and, you know, they, they do a really good job back there. So. Yeah, Utah receivers have yet to really have a great game this season. Mikey Matthews had a nice final drive, but still under 100 yards. So Utah's still looking for the first guy. It'll be interesting to come in this game. And as you mentioned, I mean, it's a lot harder to cover when you're trying to cover for five to seven seconds rather than just a normal three until you can get home. So right. that does kind of bring us to that battle in the trenches, shifting to the running game a little bit. I don't know how I think Jaquin Jackson will play a decent amount, but he did get nicked up a little bit towards the end of that game. So I don't. I think he'll play, but I just wonder if they'll go. I think they're going to go more towards Jalen Glover. And I expect, actually expect Jalen Glover to, in this game, get 100 yards rushing. He looked very good against Baylor last week. You already mentioned a little bit that the size advantage Utah is going to have with that young Weber State defensive line. But how do you think the linebackers are going to hold up when Utah's offensive line tries to get that push to the second level? Because that is something at times that Utah has struggled with this year is springing some of those bigger runs. It's happened in moments. But whenever a run has faltered for Utah, it's mostly been because one of the offensive linemen's inability to qualify crawl to the second level on those zone blocking type of plays. So how do you think the Weber State linebackers are going to do getting around those blocks if they hope to contain this Utah rushing attack? Yeah, I, I mean, it does start with Winston Reed for Weber State. He is their best player. Uh, he's a linebacker. He was the preseason defensive player of the year in the Big Sky. He was an All-American last year, first team All-Big Sky guy last year. He, he is a He's an NFL guy. He's NFL caliber. He's a beast. He had some massive plays against Northern Iowa. Um, so they're kind of there and he's their defensive captain. So he is the guy. Um, and I, I would expect him to make some plays, you know, the Utah fans in the stands kind of sit back and go, oh, you know, that, that guy, that's that's the guy. And, he, he, and he's that kind of player. Uh, they have uh, Jack Kelly, a linebacker as well. He was our defensive player of the week. Uh, this past week from Northern Iowa, he made a ton of plays, forced a couple fumbles. So their linebacking core is very strong, uh, obviously anchored by potentially the best defensive player in the big sky, maybe in the nation. He should be uh, right there uh, for the Buck Buchanan at the end of the year, which is FCS National Defensive Player of the Year. So their, their linebacking core is very impressive. So given the opportunities to make plays, you know, they'll they'll do it. But uh, as you mentioned, it. Uh, a lot of the a lot of it just comes down to the size difference. So it's just how does Weber stay handle that? Yeah, and I mentioned Utah, you know, they want to spring those big runs, but even if they're getting taken down by the linebackers a lot of the time, especially if the defensive line is getting that pushback, it could still be a three to five yard gain for Utah. And yeah. You know, if you turn those out, it will turn into first downs, of course, and methodical drives overall. So it is right. going to be an interesting task to see. And Jalen Glover broke multiple tackles against Baylor last week. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to do the same against Weber State. And I expect him to, as I mentioned, go over 100 yards. But we got to give some predictions on the Utah receivers, too, and talk about how this Utah defense is going to fare against the Weber State offense. We are going to do both of those things in one moment. But first, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about one of the sponsors of today's show and LinkedIn Talent Solutions. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Make sure you guys head over and add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. There are so many great candidates out there that are ready to work on LinkedIn and it's easy to find them and it's because they have simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. 
LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also, I want to talk to you guys about another one of our sponsors of the show, and that's UCCU. Learn and earn the UCCU mobile banking app that pays your entire family to learn about money. Kids look to parents to become more financially literate. Parents don't always know the answers. Learn and earn breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that occur and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family who can compete against each other and track their progress on leaderboards. Learn and earn is inside the UCCU mobile banking app, so play it anytime, anywhere. The more you play, the more you learn, and... The more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. UCCU, love where you bank. All right, Bryson, coming back in for this one. Uh, I'll give some quick final predictions on the Utah receivers. We, we kind of hit the Utah offense versus Weber State defense pretty good, but I do think this is going to be Mikey Matthews, the true freshman. I think this will be the first game he goes over 100 yards on his career. I just think a shifty route running that allowed him to create separation against Baylor DBs. I think that'll allow him to make plays. Also, I just don't expect Nate to have a lot of explosive plays in this game, and Mikey is more of a short guy, kind of your guy who can get you that easy 5 to 10 yards because of the quick feet and ability to create that separation. And I do expect two other Utah receivers to go over 50 yards. So it's just going to be interesting to see how this Utah offense fares against Weber State. Utah has obviously had a lot of success in their games against FCS opponents. We mentioned the 40 they scored against Weber last year when they played Southern Utah a year ago, which Weber State is a much better team than this year than that Southern Utah team was last year. Even Southern Utah this year is much better than they were last year when Utah hung 73 on him in that game. But I do expect Utah to have a similar offensive output in this contest and we'll give a final score prediction at the end too but now let's talk about this weber state defense and when you're talking about this weber state defense or excuse me the utah defense going against the weber state offense you already mentioned uh damon bankston the success he's had you know multiple offensive linemen returning from the all conference awards what are you expecting to see out of this weber state offense against a utah defense particularly along the defensive line that has some big dudes yeah it'll be an interesting matchup for sure because i really anticipate you know, like I mentioned, Weber will try to keep the ball on the ground quite a bit, but that Utah defensive front is so tough and their linebackers are so good that, you know, it, it's tough. Um, but Weber's offensive line, you know, they have four seniors listed on the depth chart as starting. So they're veterans. They've been around. They've played uh, the University of Utah, at least, uh, you know, uh, but they've played against big time opponents. They've played against defensive lines like this. So they've seen it. It's nothing new. Uh, Damon Bankston does have the ability to just get out and make massive plays on his own. You know, he has a nice spin move. He gets away from defenders. He, he does a good job. Uh, you know, Weber State quarterback Kylan Weiser is kind of, you know, he doesn't have a ton of experience. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really he's not the type to air the ball out, but he can make connection throws. He's a very good quarterback. Uh, but, you know, the Weber State offense, just you know, they've got a lot of talent, but we'll see what that talent, uh, how it translate from, translates from the SCS level to the FBS level. Hard to play in Rice Eccles Stadium as well. It gets very loud there. There's a reason this team hasn't lost a true home game since 2018. Yeah. And, you know, because of how successful this Utah front seven, I mean, they actually got pushed around against Baylor a little bit in the first half. They gave up multiple third and long runs, which is really frustrating to watch, but in the first quarter, first half. But then the second half, you could see Junior Tafuna. It was his first half back playing football. Didn't miss the first game because of an injury. When he came back, even in the second half against Baylor, you could see how dominant he was. And just this Utah defensive line really stepped, a bit, stepped up in general. I trust Coach Whittingham, this staff, to have these guys motivated coming into this one. And they'll know that Weber State wants to impose their will by trying to run the ball and control the clock. And I don't think Utah's going to allow that to happen, whether it's the defensive lineman controlling gaps or linebackers shooting through them to make plays for tackles for loss. So because of that, I do think Weber State is going to get in a lot of third and long situations. And as you mentioned, that's not really where this Wildcats team really thrives. So that's why I think overall for this game, Weber State is going to be held under 250 yards of offense. And honestly, I could even see them being held to under 150 through three quarters if that's where Utah plays their starters through three quarters. Whenever the starters come out, then that number can fluctuate and change. But like I said, I just think it's going to be hard to move the ball because you mentioned not turning the ball over. If you're in third and long and trying to test this Utah secondary, which does have some playmakers in it, especially at the two safety spots, I, I think that's where you could get in trouble and turn the ball over. Yeah, no, absolutely. So everything you said is spot on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, that's why they line them up and play them, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned Kyle Whittingham. That, you know, Kyle, Kyle knows that, you know, these FCS teams are going to hang around as long mm -hmm. as you let them. So 
uh, you know, all these, you know, this is a Jay Hill built team, but Mickey Mendel stepping in, he's doing a good job. Weber State's got 39 guys from the state of Utah. They're going to really want to ball out. Right. So, you know, you, these FCS games, they can sneak up on you. I mean, Weber State went to Logan last year and blew out Utah State. So yeah. this isn't a team that's uh, unfamiliar for or of doing something like that. So I'm sure they've got the full attention of Kyle Whittingham. I, I totally agree. I think they do have the attention. Kyle Whittingham's not the kind of coach to let his team happen. And uh, look, you mentioned like Utah in terms of like for projecting Utah to win or Weber State to win like that. Obviously, Utah is the favorite, right? Like ESPN's predictor. Utah, 97% chance to win, 2.9% for Weber State. But there is a reason you still play the game. Mm-hmm. Crazy upsets happen. Yep. I don't expect it to happen in this one just with the how this Utah team is built, like not a flashy like kind of quarterback who's just going to like turn the ball over a lot in general. I don't think they're going to have Nate Johnson do that. I think they'll have him be a little like just throw it more in general, but I don't think they're going to be reckless with it. And that's why I think Utah will be able to get the win. But I think you make a great point, especially with all those Utah players who are going to be extremely motivated to prove you should prove Utah wrong for not giving them the opportunity to come to their school. And uh, that's going to be interesting to see for a couple other defensive predictions. I got is I do think Utah gets three turnovers in this game. I think they get one strip sack because of the third and long potential. I just think my, and Utah gets crazy with the blitzes and the speed and athleticism of the Utah defense is something that's going to be, I think hard for the Weber state offensive line to pick up. You mentioned they do have some experience, so I think they'll have a chance to, but I do. And it's not going to be like every time it's not going to end in the turnover for sure. But I just do think once one of those linebacker blitzes gets in, I think Utah will have two interceptions i think they could have five sacks too when you look at the speed and the strength they're bringing on the interior and then the strength um the the interior excuse me and then the speed off the edge for this utah defense but it it, with weber state as you mentioned with this senior laden offensive line with new quarterback going to be in third and long situations do you think even though this passing attack doesn't have as much just not what the strength of this team is do you think they'd be capable of making a play or two if put in that situation if this game is somehow close yeah, I do. I think, um, you know, Weiser, Weiser's a veteran. He's been at Weber mm-hmm. State his whole career. He's been around. He knows the offense, knows the playbook. They've got a tight end to Hayden Meacham that's a senior. He's been around. He'll be able to get out and make some plays over the middle. Um, you know, I, I think they will. I think, you know, like I said in the open, the biggest keys in these contests is just hanging around as, as long as you can, just trying to make, just trying to make it uncomfortable uh, for the team that, you know, is – supposed to win right so I, I do think they'll be able to make plays early it just comes down to and a lot of it against in these matchups it's it's a depth thing you know weaver state has a lot of guys that could be playing at the power five level but you know when it comes down to you're too deep and your backups you know that's that's really where the difference in fbs and fcs shows through so so how uh how how much do those guys that come in you know off the bench you know can they make the plays to to keep weaver state in the game but i i do think the offense will will find some success for sure early on well now it's time to give our predictions bryson so for me i'm going to go utah I, this is where it gets interesting just because it is nate johnson's first start and just in general, if he did turn the ball over, if he struggled a little bit, I don't expect him to. I think he's going to have a very good day, but it's like if it's Cam rising in there, like that's where I could be like, oh, Utah will have a chance to put up 50 points again. But I do respect this Weber State defense. I'm going to give Utah 38. I think there's a couple of like third and three situations where Nate Johnson is going to make a mistake. The running game will get stood up. So I think Utah will score 38, but I do think this Utah defense will look as sharp as they've been. So I'm going to go 38 to 10 for me. What are you feeling in this one? Yeah, I think when they played two seasons ago, the final score was 40 to 17. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, this this is that was a very good Weber State team. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is another good Weber State team. So I would anticipate something right around that. I I like that 38 number. um, But yeah, something very similar to the last time, I think, is uh, is is very, uh, you know, probably a a good prediction. But, um, you know, I'm telling you, man, you saw the last time with Rashid Shahid. Mm-hmm. If Abraham Williams can return a kick early, and Utah has a, a small lead, or and Weber State takes a small lead, you know, the, the the thoughts start to creep in on the other sideline. You know, so so if if Weber State's able to make a couple plays early, I think you know they have the ability to hang around with this Utah team for a while. 
yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if they're able to get what would be the, the best win in program history for Weber State. They have the potential to be able to do it. it it's going to take a lot, but I don't think it's it's different than if you were playing a team that's not ranked inside the top 10 of the FCS if you're Utah in this contest. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And uh, these matchups can be a lot of fun to provide a, different, a lot of different things. And it's something I want to talk about some of the Ram. Kyle Whittingham actually made a statement recently about how he's worried these games might go away once the – potential super conferences form, which we don't even know what's going to happen in the future of college football, but that's just something Whittingham said. I think in in a second, we're going to talk about the value that these games can bring for both schools. But first, I do want to tell you guys about our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customer bet, customers who bet $5 will get $100 off the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. You can bet on everything from the spread to player props and so much more. If you guys think your NFL team or even your college team is going to be able to turn around, get on the right track, or if you think Utah is going to be able to keep their momentum going, head over to FanDuel because you can visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer and college season you won't want to miss. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Also, I want to talk to you guys about an exciting thing we have going on here at the Locked On College Network. It's Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. That means if you're watching mine, Locked On Pac-12, you can find the Locked On College Football Kickoff Live show where they'll talk about the biggest matchups of the week, storylines, they'll preview it all. So make sure you guys head over and check it out. Once again, that's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. So head over there and check out that great content we have, and it'll be going live depending on when you're listening to this today, or you can just go back and watch. All right, Bryson, to close this one out, when you talk about the value of playing FCS schools, I'll start from, actually, you know, I'd rather hear from you. What do you think the biggest value is for these type of games, not just for Weber State versus the Utah on this one, but all of the FCS schools that do this and go and play these big schools? Yeah, uh, it's twofold. Uh, the first is obviously promotion, right? You know, when you're playing these games as an FCS team, a lot of times you're playing on a national network. Uh, that might be one of the only times you do that during the season. You know, at the Big Sky, we have a deal with ESPN yes. Plus. We have a couple games on linear ESPN, but not every conference has that. Uh, and, you know, for a lot of FCS teams, this is the one time a year they, they do play on a national network. So that's obviously huge. And second, obviously, you know, it's monetarily right. There's no secret to this. Weber State's getting a paycheck to go play the University of Utah. And, you know, when I was at Southern Utah, that was massive. You know, mm-hmm. those those buy games were a lot of times how we funded a lot of, you know, the program. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it's very important. And, you know, you, you kind of mentioned it uh, leading into that. Uh, break there that depending on how college football shakes out over the next five, 10, however many years, these games could potentially go away. And it it would be very tough for a lot of schools on our level because a lot of schools run their football program uh, with help of the funds they get by playing these types of games. So uh, they're vital. They're, They're absolutely vital for the FCS level. And we know what a moneymaker the sport of college football is in general. So I don't even think, correct me if I'm wrong, Bryce, it's not even just football. It's when you say program, it's the athletic, like program and department, all sports, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, uh, especially when you're at a program of a smaller size, you know, the 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 pot is the pot. <laughs> you know, everybody, you know, helps everybody and, you know. There, there's buy games across all sports. Obviously, there's mm-hmm. men's basketball. You see, you're starting to see it more and more uh, with women's sports, which is exciting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, a lot of times schools have to go out and play two FBS teams just to help their athletic department, you know, stay where they need to be funding wise. So you know, it, it's very important. And you know, if whatever the co- future of college football looks like, if it entails not playing FCS teams, there's a lot of schools that are going to have to reevaluate their budget and where their money comes from. So it, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a scary time. It is a, that's a scary thought. <laughs> it obviously is, but you know, for right now we'll enjoy them and it'll be cool to see Weber State play at Rice Eccles this weekend. And, you know, we, uh, one of our teams picked up an SBS, an FBS win last week, Idaho went to Nevada and took care of the Wolf Pack. They'll play Cal this weekend. Uh, you know, so We'll, we'll keep enjoying uh, picking up some upsets for now, and uh, we'll, we'll see what the future looks like. 
Yeah, I really hope they do stay. And I thought you had, did a great job hitting the nail on the head of the FCS point. I think for Utah, these are the games that like the red shirt that's been sitting on the bench all season and is probably not going to play a lot more. This, If you take care of business, this is the game in the fourth quarter. La- like last year, this is what happened where we actually saw Jaquin and Jackson at quarterback because he was the third string quarterback at the time, now the running back. But these are the games where the underclassmen get in. They get that opportunity, get that taste where they're like, okay, I get to play a little bit here. And then it just gives you a taste a little bit rather than like you have to go back home to your family once season's over like i never played once so you can say no i played against here and as you mentioned as well elevating the brand too and wins are hard to come by in college football so hypothetically when you schedule this game which fcs schools do do a good job sometimes of coming in and even though they're getting paid they come away with the victory as well as the bag this is one where utah i i think as we said they should win but it is a good it's a good opportunity for them to continue to rack up what should be a win as well to help their season so these games really benefit both schools i really hope to not see them go away but all we can do is enjoy the present because the future is so un- uncertain especially in college football prices so it's going to be a lot of fun but if people enjoy watching weaver state and once again this is a top seven fcs team the big sky is loaded with talented teams and uh what do you just expect this season from the big sky it's it's exciting, man. Yeah, we've got six nationally ranked teams. Eastern Washington was receiving votes as well after hanging with Fresno State for a long time Saturday night. Uh, took them all the way to overtime. Uh, you know, we're, we're very excited at the conference office. We've got six teams that we're very excited about, uh, ranked very high. Uh, you know, we've had five teams in the playoffs the last couple of years. We'd love to bump that up one more. So, so we'll see what that looks like, but you know, Montana state went to South Dakota state, played a really close game, went down to the final play of the game against the number one team in the nation. So they're right up there. Idaho looks great. You know, we've, it's a really exciting time in the big sky conference and, you know, the FBS is getting to a, a 12 team playoff that FCS has been doing a, a big playoff mm-hmm. for a long time. So, you know, to be able to say we have the potential to get six teams in the playoff is very exciting. Uh, and, you know, we're really looking forward to November because, uh, you know, that's when the bracket comes out and everything. So we're, we're uh, at, at this level. We're glad we're glad the FBS is catching up a little bit. <laughs> One more year of a 14 playoff. But exactly. Uh, yeah, but then they'll be there. The FCS playoff can be so much fun. Just in general, the base guy's a great conference, and I'm not even just saying that because of who my dad is. I genuinely love, I've loved being a part, going to different events, even helping out at some of them, the games, the competition, and especially just once the playoff rolls in. And this could be the year for the big guys, so it could be a lot of fun. So make sure you guys check out those games on ESPN. And of course, check out Utah versus Weber State this Saturday. Bryson, really appreciate you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, man. It was fun. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes. Enjoy the game, and we'll be back with you Monday reacting to it and getting you all ready as the Utes begin Pac-12 play taking on the UCLA Bruins. We'll see you then.